Hi, and welcome to the Rotated Cup Expert YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Daniel Orcutt. Uh, in this channel, we talk about um, all, all things rotator cuff. We know that rotator cuff surgery and, and surgeries around the shoulder are not easy, um, but my job is to try to make it as easy as possible for you. So if you have any questions, any thoughts, please leave them down below. Please um, subscribe to the channel, YouTube, Rotator Cuff Expert. Also, we have another website that we talk about. Uh, so a little bit of different things as well as there's some uh, products and, and um, uh, things that you can help you get through your recovery. And that's at, the website is myprotector.com. Anyway, thank you so much and hope you enjoy the next video. Uh, and we will talk to you in just a minute. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Rotator Cup Expert. We got some beach balls here today. Um, we'll talk a little bit about beach balls, but um, upcoming we'll talk about why these are important and what they can do to help you uh, in recovering from rotator cuff uh, repair. Anyway, today we're not talking about beach balls. Today we're talking about the distal clavicle uh, and talking specifically about distal clavicle excision. So that's part of the surgery. So when you have surgery in rotator cuff, there's other things that can be addressed. And so one of the things is the distal clavicle. One of the, one of the things is subacromial decompression, some the distal clavicle excision. And so we'll talk a little bit about specifically about the clavicle, the distal clavicle and the AC joint today to better understand what that means, why it's important and why we might do it and why we might not do it. When we talk about <clears throat> the distal clavicle, so we first have to understand what distal means. So we talk about proximal and distal in medicine. So distal means away and proximal means towards. So when you talk about the clavicle, the clavicle is the same thing as the collarbone. The distal clavicle is the end of the clavicle right here. So this is the proximal aspect of the clavicle where the joint is here is called the um, uh, sternoclavicular joint. So the sternum is here and the beginning of the clavicle is here. So this is the SC joint. As we go all the way across to here, this is the end of the clavicle and the end of the clavicle is the distal clavicle. So if we look on this diagram here, so here's the clavicle coming around, the clavicle ends, and then there's a space at the joint, and then there's the acromion. The acromion is the bone that comes up around from the shoulder blade up and around. So the distal clavicle is the end of the clavicle, and that end of the clavicle makes one part of the joint called the AC joint, the acromial clavicular joint right here. And so when we talk about a distal clavicle, we're talking about part of the AC joint. Now, why in the world would you do anything with the AC joint? Well, if the AC joint's injured, uh, sometimes we need to address it. So the AC, AC joint has arthritis that we may need to address it. And so we're gonna pop up an image of a MRI that looks at the AC joint and we can see a lot of whiteness and that whiteness in the MRI is inflammation and arthritis at that joint. So when we have inflammation and arthritis at the joint, we may decide to do something. Now, it's important to note that we don't always do something. So if we look at an MRI or we look at an X-ray and we see arthritis at the AC joint, what do we do? Well, the first thing that we do is we talk to the patient. And so this is key. So when you talk with your orthopedic surgeon, we need to talk to them about whether or not you're having pain. So there's lots of different pain centers around the shoulder, right? There's some for the rotator cuff, some for the arthritis, some for the biceps. So there's lots of pain centers. So the key thing for us as orthopedic surgeons, as, as patients and being adequate for patients is to make sure that we evaluate the AC joint and make sure if there's something wrong with the AC joint that we're having symptoms of that. So that's a big thing when we talk about MRIs too, because if we get an MRI, MRIs are really powerful. They show a lot of stuff. And a lot of that stuff may or may not be important. And the radiologist who's reading that MRI doesn't know what's important, right? So they'll list this, this, this. Sometimes you get MRI reports of 10 things, 10 things wrong. And, and, and maybe all 10 are symptomatic, but most likely there's only a few that are symptomatic. And those are the things we need to draw our attention to and focus on. Because if we do, don't do that, and we just look at a blank slate and say, okay, we need to address this, sometimes we may address the wrong thing or too many things. And if we address too many things, sometimes that may create uh, bigger problems of stiffness and pain postoperatively. So what we need to do is make sure that we're addressing the right thing. Now, how do you do that? Well, the easy way to do that, as far as an orthopedic is concerned, is we actually evaluate the patient. We talk to the patient, we say, hey, where does it hurt? We touch the patient, we do some maneuvers of the patient to make sure what we're talking about and what the patient feels is important. 
So if we get an MRI report that says, hey, they have arthritis at AC joint. And I do this very fancy test. This fancy test is I do this. I go, I press right there on the AC joint and I say, hey, does that hurt? If the patient says, no doc, it doesn't hurt. Then they have asymptomatic arthritis at the AC joint. And that happens lots and lots and lots of times. So most of the time in my patients, we have an AC joint that may be arthritic, but doesn't hurt. So if it doesn't hurt, we don't take care of it. We don't mess with it. Underneath the AC joint, right, is this thing called the rotator cuff. So lots of times when I'm doing a rotator cuff repair because the rotator cuff is torn and they have symptoms of that, that torn rotator cuff, again, evaluation, hands-on, touching people, talking to people, making sure we understand their, uh, their problems and their pain patterns. So if we might be doing an AC, we may be doing a rotator cuff repair, we might see some arthritis up on the top of that and say, hey, should we address the arthritis? Lots of times the answer is no. Why? Again, because it doesn't hurt. If it doesn't hurt, then we shouldn't do anything because if we do something to the AC joint, we will make it hurt. We'll make it hurt for a long time. And so we want to make sure if we're going to address the AC joint, that we address it because it's symptomatic. Why would it be symptomatic? Well, there's a few different reasons why it would be symptomatic. First, arthritis, right? But as we just talked about, lots of times arthritis does not make it symptomatic. It actually might not cause any problems at all. Uh, because that are that joint oftentimes it becomes arthritic it fuses and when it fuses it doesn't hurt so you might have some instability over time but then it fuses it doesn't hurt so it doesn't hurt we don't want to mess it up because we don't want to make it hurt more but we want to make sure that we're, we're addressing everything that we need to address we're going to do another episode on what exactly we do to the ac joint if we need to do it right um so we first of all we need to make sure they're symptomatic Second of all, we'll talk about what's the right thing to do and how many things can you do in the shoulder at the same time? And how many things should you do in the shoulder at the same time? A lot of it has to do with the pain pattern of the patient. We'll have another episode, we'll talk about the distal clavicle, what we do, why we do it, and we will go from there. Thank you so much. Questions, comments, please leave them below. Uh, please like it, please subscribe to the channel, and we'll try to give more and more content as we can and as we go along. Thanks and have a good night, and we'll talk to you soon.